Taylor KB for Cardrunners.com. Um, I'm playing uh, 50 cent dollar no limit. Um, playing two six max cash games. I prefer to play six max because there's a little bit more action and uh, there's a little bit more room for um, you know manipulating your opponents and things like that. However, um, the, what I'm emphasizing in this video is that when you're playing these levels, the mid to lower stakes games online, uh, you need to emphasize. You need to be patient. Um, you have to pick your spots right, and you can't just be um, doing some of the things that you see the high stakes players doing, like bluffing a ton of hands and opening a, a crazy amount of pots. So if you notice, I just folded the four queen suited over here in the blinds because I'm out of position. I'm, I'm trying to remain patient. Um, I flopped second pair here. Um, I'm at about 475 into the 15. Uh, do, I'm sorry, the seven dollar pot. Um, and I've been almost instantly min re-raised by this guy. Uh, it's been raised middle position. I'm going to call with queen, queen king suited um, on the button. It's a good, good hand to have on the button. Um, I've been min re-raised right here just almost instantly. Uh, I'm actually just going to give up the hand. This is a situation where I think he's probably got, at best, he's got some sort of draw. I, I have absolutely no read on him. Um, and I have second pair. So at a, at a bigger game, um, I might try to call and, and hit a card or with the intentions of taking the pot away later. But in, in, a, in a smaller game where I'm unlikely to get someone to fold with just a bluff, um, I'm going to uh, just kind of just let go of the hand right there. Okay, I flopped uh, two over cards as well as a flush right here. This is a very big flop. Um, I'm going to bet 650 into the pot. And this is a hand that I will go all the way with. Um, you'll see I have two over cards and a flush draw. So unless he has a set, which is very unlikely given the way that um, you know, he raised and then checked to me. It's just there's not very many sets out there. Um, it, given that situation, he's unlikely to have a hand that is like completely dominating me. Um, and even if he does, I have a flush draw. So that's a situation where I'm just going to make a continuation bet and take the pot down. I see some players check in situations like that, but you're just better off raising um, for the, just the chance to take down the pot before you even hit your hand. And if you hit your hand and they call, you know, that's great too. Um, okay, I've flopped uh, top pair here. It's pretty good, a uh, mediocre kicker. Um, I'm at about 475 again. Um, just a little bit over half the size of the pot, maybe about two thirds of the pot. Um, that's a situation where with top pair against a shorter stack, a guy that has only uh, 20 big blinds or so, um, I'm gonna go, go, go broke with a hand. Uh, I'm gonna get all in right there. Um, so basically, uh, you know, one thing, that I'm, one thing I'm thinking about when I'm playing these guys are um, are the stack sizes. So I'm raising uh, against a guy that has 20 big blinds and I flop top pair. There's absolutely no way I'm ever getting away from it. Um, I might not even fold middle pair to him because it's just a, there's just a very good chance that middle pair is the best hand and it's not going to cost me much more. So say I bet and he raised me and I had middle pair, like the seven jack hand that I folded to the guy on the other table, I might have called um, in that situation if I had like middle pair on that flop. Maybe I wouldn't on an ace high flop because it's likely that he has an ace. But uh, what I'm saying is the, the, the stack sizes that you face have a the stack sizes that you face have a direct uh, impact on how you want to play the players that you're against. So if you're playing against a shorter stack, uh, you know you're, you need to take take into consideration that uh, you, you might go go broke with the hand that you might fold um, against the guy with the big stack. Uh, okay, I've got pocket queens. It's not a great flop for me. I'm actually just going to check right here. Um, I think it's unlikely that he's going to bet right here without an ace. I might call him one time for, for a $4 bet into a $8 pot or so. I'm going to call with, with pocket queens, but I'm probably going to give up the hand on the river if, if, he, if he bets again. Now at a, at, a, at a higher stakes game, I'm more than likely going to... Oh, he instantly bets five right there. Okay, let me, let me react to the other table right here first. It's been limped and I, I'm in the blinds. I have ace high here, which is probably the best. I'm just going to lead out for the pot and hopefully he just folds the hand. I think I have the best hand right here and I'll know based on what happens. He bets five into the $15 pot. He instantly leads out. And now this is a situation where being patient is, in my opinion, the best thing to be doing right here. Um, this situation where a, a, a quick lead with a, with a smallish bet usually means a sort of weak hand. And what, what that's gonna do for me, hold on one second, I'm, I'm gonna have to fold this hand right here and I'm gonna have an action on the other table too. It's been raised and called. I'm going to re-raise with ace queen. Um, but a, a, a weak lead into a pot very quickly means that he was probably planning on making that bet on the river no matter what. 
And if he's making that bet on the river no matter what, he either has a very big hand to a decent hand. He probably doesn't have nothing at all. So he's probably just making that bet because he's scared of what might happen and he doesn't really know what to do. Now, at a higher stakes table, what I'm going to do is likely put him, put, him, put him to the test because I think he probably has a somewhat weak hand and I think he's not going to call me. However, at a lower stakes game, like I said, you need to be more patient. So I'm going to let the hand go, not give a guy credit for, a whole lot of credit for fold, being able to fold the hand, and then I'm just going to fold the hand to him. Okay, it's been, it's, it's been bet. Uh, he, he made it $2, so I'm going to make it 6 I flopped a straight. Um, and I'm going to have to fold this hand right here, actually, with ace-queen. It was raised, called over here, and then I re-raised with ace-queen. Uh, this guy, the guy who raised early position, um, put me all in or basically effectively would have put me all in because if I call him, I have to put half my chips in. If I'm going to put half my chips in, I'm not going to fold any hand on the flop. So basically, I'm either folding or I'm all in right there. And against that guy, I'm going to be all in. I'm going to fold because I have ace-queen against a guy that's an early position raiser. Um, that, that's one of the reasons why you want to raise with him. It's, it's a very good chance that he had a hand like ace-king. So he raised, called, I re-raised with ace-queen. Now, I could have just called with ace-queen, but I want to isolate in that situation because it's just very likely that I have the best hand, and if I don't, I want to find out now. I don't want to see a flop and then have it come ace high and not really know what to do when, when I bet and he raises. Um, I'm just going to put this guy all in right here. I've got a straight. Um, there's some draws out there. Okay, he has two. He made two pair on the turn, and my hand held up, so that's good. Um, I didn't want to mess around at that point. Um, just got it all in. Um, with uh, a straight. So that shows you that you, know, you, you don't want to slow play a hand like a straight at, 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 at these levels. So now I think being patient is a very good theme when you're playing um, mid stakes to low stakes online because if you'll notice, um, guys aren't going to fold a whole lot of hands to you. So I've shown how I'm going to be aggressive with my good hands, like I re-raise that ace queen and then another guy re-raise me again and I'm going to let go of that hand. I'm going to be patient, I'm going to wait for a hand like an ace king or a pocket queens or kings or aces to get my money in, in that spot. Um, and when I flopped it straight, I check raised the guy three times, and then I put them all in. I wasn't going to mess around. I had a good hand. I'm going to play it strong. So what I'm trying to say is that when you're playing these types of games, the middle to low to uh, to low stakes online, be patient. When you have a good hand, play it strong and make the guys pay you off. Because guys are going to pay you off. They're not going to fold. So don't get too creative. Um, and you, if you'll notice on the hand where I had the pocket queens, my read was that the guy had a weak a weak hand, maybe like a weak ace or something like that. But I didn't try to get too creative and put them all in and, and make the hero play. Um, and that's important to remember when you're playing these low stakes games. So um, that's it for the sample video right now. I, I hope you guys check out Card Runners. Um, you can find us at cardrunners.com. We, we do videos like this. Uh, we upload six videos a week and uh, members enjoy access to all of these videos. And we have all different stakes on different types of games online. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks.